Cocaine was selling for $50,000 per kilo. Now, at the end of this administration, cocaine is selling for $10,000 per kilo. What does that tell you about our so-called drug program? And when my opponent... You see, you're out of control. You're too aggressive. It makes you look strident and unfeminine. I don't want you to look like the teacher scolding the children. <laughs> Dan, I'm not acting up there. I know this may come as a wild notion to you, but I actually care about what I'm saying. Yes, of course, of course. We're just trying to maximize the potential of your full visual impact. Keep them from selling! But you're too emotional. I want you to bring it in. Yeah, but if I... Lieutenant. Ah. Congresswoman Madeline Woods. Yes. And her campaign manager, Dan Shaw. How do you do? It's a pleasure to meet you. Mr. My Shaw. pleasure. As you know, Congresswoman, Lieutenant Castillo was the officer responsible for yesterday's drug seizure. So I gathered good work, Lieutenant. It pains me to discover that one of my campaign workers was involved in this sorry affair. I assume that you're familiar with my record on drugs. Yes, I'm aware of it. It's very strong, and we appreciate all that you've done. So, uh, I was hoping that uh, perhaps you would share whatever information you may have with me. At the present time, that would be impossible. We're in the middle of the investigation. Martin, maybe we shouldn't be too rigid about this. Everyone here is entirely discreet. Lieutenant, I don't understand your reluctance. This young man's drug dealings underscore the extent of the problem we're facing. These punks were working right out of our own office. At the present time, the case rests in my office. Very well, Lieutenant. If you want to stand on some pro forma sort of ritual, that's, that's okay with me, but uh, I think I ought to remind you that I am the chairperson on the subcommittee on drugs, and I could be extremely helpful to your department. So, well, I think you ought to reconsider. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Good afternoon. I want you to fill the center of mass with rounds. Dan, I am not comfortable with this. Not everyone wants to play John Wayne and carry a pistol around all the time. I'm not asking you to play John Wayne all the time. Now look, I was elected on my record, and I'm not about to sacrifice it to accommodate some right-wing <clears throat> macho agenda, okay? It's okay to talk to me like that, but in public, I'd go light on the feminist banter. Dan, if I'm going to be reelected, I'm going to do it on my terms. That's all. That's fine. Just remember, the 60s were 100 years ago. Oh, <laughs> Louis, what are you doing? Mom, this is... You're rather a good shot, Mrs. Woods. Allow me. As you can see, so am I. Sebastian Ross. This is my associate, Maury Bergman. Sebastian Ross? At your service. Lewis? Your son seems to be tongue-tied, Congresswoman. Allow me to explain. He and several partners have been engaged in, well, I think piracy on the high seas would be the best way to describe it. What are you talking about? Oh, perhaps you're not aware of your son's little hobby. You see, he stole a consignment of drugs from me. And now, unless you do exactly as I say, your political career is over. I gather your election race is rather close. In fact, after your last press coverage, I'd say... I don't give a damn what you say. Now, you get out of here. Wait a minute, ma'am. No, for what? I should explain further. I don't want to hear any explanations from you. One of Lewis's partners in crime, a certain Mr. Di Maria, has already expired. Now, unless you'd like your son to join him.
Lewis, is that true? Oh, my God, Lewis. My God, Lewis. Listen, you. I am not going to be bullied by you. And you can count on that. Maybe we should discuss the matter, Mr. Ross. Your aide is a very bright boy, Congresswoman. Oh, don't worry. What we're going to ask of you is very simple. And now, why don't we all adjourn to the club room for a drink? Come along, Edwina. Oh, Lois. Could you do this to me? Particularly now when I'm on the brink of the most important re-election of my life. How could you do this to me? I do this to you? Yes. Oh, that's wonderful. That's so typical. Typical of what? What are you talking about? You still don't understand, do you? You've never been there for me. You were always far too busy with your stupid career. Now, just a minute. At this time, when you have practically, single-handedly destroyed my career. You stand here and expect me to, to understand that you think I'm a failed mother? I have every right to pursue my life and my profession. And do I have to remind you that I worked my way up in a field dominated by men, never once forgetting that I also had to be your mother? And where were you all those times? All those times when I was alone? It works two ways, you know. I'll tell you where you were. You were busy partying your fine silk shirts and tooling around in your fancy little car afforded to you by my big stupid career. Exactly what is it that you've accomplished that's so terrific? Mom, you got to help me. You know what they'll do. I need time to think. <laughs>